good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good morning. It's good to see you out there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start uh, with, with a song that, uh, that I sang a little bit for you last week. This will be new to you, but it's, uh, it's got, got a, lot of, a lot of easy material in it as far as the, the notes, rhythms, all that stuff. But it's got a lot of words. Uh, so just be ready for that. Uh, read along, sing along, and as you learn it, uh, feel free to, to, to join us as we worship. So can you please sing as we sing Grace Alone? Welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Milshu. My name is Christopher Cage. It is my privilege to serve as your liturgist for the month of September. To our listeners on Channel 6 and Facebook Live, good morning and welcome. Those present, please sign and pass the attendance pad as we'd like a record of all here today. If you look directly in front of you on the back side of the pew, prayer cards can be found. Take a moment and share an area in which you would like prayers to be made. The offering plate is in the back and all prayer cards can be dropped off there. If you'll turn your attention um, to the back of your bulletin or in your bulletin, you'll see that there's a community prayer meeting. Um, looks like it's on Sunday, September 27th at 5.30 at the courthouse. 
And it looks like you'll gather and pray for um, just our nation in general. Another announcement is uh, Maureen Hooten is turning 90. And that is this coming Saturday. And because of COVID and everything, they're not going to have a party necessarily at her house. But cards are welcomed. And Gala said if they could get 90 cards, that would be wonderful. So remember Maureen next Saturday. Are there any other announcements this morning? If there are none, I'll invite Brooks to come up and lead us in prayer. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Hey, let's get... That is uh, no achievement. It took a long time for her to achieve that. Uh, we are glad that you are here today. Let's continue to worship. Uh, Anthony, thank you for singing that song, leading us, guys. I, I learned a new song today, so thank you. Would you uh, pray with us? This is the pastoral prayer. It's not the prayer, really, that the pastor prays, even though it seems like the pastor always gets up, some, gets up and, and prays and leads it. Uh, one day, someone here in the, in the audience. Now, one of the congregation might stand up and lead it, if you're bold enough. But it's the pastoral prayer. It's where the church prays. That's really what the pastoral prayer is. It's the church praying for the church in a lost world. So would you please, uh, let's bow our heads and let's find that place where we can focus upon the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let's take just a moment. Would you invite us into your presence? Call us, beckon us. And help us go there in our minds. In Jesus' name. Lift up the concerns that you may have brought with you today. Just name them in your heart. Now pray for each and every one of us. Y'all pray for the church anonymously. Consider how you may have fallen short of the glory of God, as Paul wrote. We are fallen. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone, but we are yet on a path towards Christian perfection, perfection in love. Lord Jesus, forgive us, we pray. We name our sins and our shortcomings. All those moments, we name them in our heart right now. If you have to say them out loud to break free, do that. We love you, we respect you, and we keep them in confidence. Hear us, we pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you in our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church at times. We have broken your laws. We have rebelled against your love. We often at times forget the need of our neighbor. Forgive us, we pray. In Jesus' name, free us for joyful obedience. And now... Renewed by your grace, we pray for our church and the community in Mule Shoe. <clears throat> if there's a concern or uh, something you want to pray and lift up, just lift them up out loud and we pray with you in agreement. Just lift them up right now. We pray for those who are fighting COVID. We pray for healing upon your people. We pray, Lord Jesus, for our leaders around our state, community, and around our nation who are making decisions based on what they find that will change our lives, that will change the lives of young people. They're playing sports as uh, seniors. They're in college. They're, they're making decisions that will change their lives. 
Lord, we pray for all those people in leadership that they will have wisdom that may not be their own, that you will grant them wisdom and insight in this time. We pray for all of our first responders. We pray for those who are serving as police officers and firemen especially, and especially, especially those who are serving our community as police, police officers, peace officers, highway patrol, sheriffs. They are under siege by a radically left and evil culture. And we pray for their safety. And we pray, Lord Jesus, like Romans 13, 4, you will allow them to be your instrument of wrath and justice and order upon the wrongdoer. Keep them safe as they fulfill their calling. We pray for your church around the world. We pray for the martyrs today and their families, that you would give peace to those families who lose their loved ones because of their faith in Jesus today. And we pray your church rises up all around the world as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. And now is the time when the ushers used to walk forward. And we take our offering. Our offering is in the back. Would y'all just wave back there? You can see we have a little, uh, uh, what is it? Not a bucket. Uh, <laughs> offering, plate. Uh, offering plate. Right. And uh, you can go and you can drop, uh, drop your offering. Uh, there is no offering that is too small. Uh, we thank you for supporting our church. We thank you in this time uh, where attendance is limited. People want to stay home that you're continuing to support the church. We have beaten Corona, have we not? We are beating Corona right now. But thank you for your support. It's back there uh, and you can see it when you leave. Would you now join us as we give our rightful praise to the one who deserves it only in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Amen. All right. I believe the kids need to come forward now and join Cheyenne at the front for children's moment. Good morning, everybody. How are we this morning? Oh, that wasn't very good. How are we this morning? Good, thank you. Okay, so this morning I have a little story to share with y'all. Do we like story time? That was weak again. Do we like story time? Yes, okay, much better. Okay, so my story goes like this. So there's this really mean guy, okay, and his name is Saul, okay? And basically he travels from town to town looking for people who love Jesus and follow Jesus. And he looks for any reason in the world to basically just throw them in jail. He doesn't think they need to be here. How rude, right? Yeah, I know. Basically he's like a bully, yes? So, a big bag of bully, yes, that's right. <laughs> So as Sal's doing these mean and reckless acts, all of a sudden, bang, this light shines down on him and it's God. And he's telling him, you have done these horrible acts. So therefore I'm going to blind you for three whole days and you have to walk by yourself. You've got to find your way to the city of Damascus. Okay. 
but you're blind the whole time. Does anybody know what it's like to be blind? What does blind mean? You can't see anything. And so what I've brought today is a bandana. And Lincoln, I think you're gonna be my lucky little helper this morning, okay? So what I want you to do, mom, could you help me a little bit? Okay, and we're gonna play a little game. Case, can you go stand over there for me, please? Will it fit? We may have to have you hold it if it doesn't fit. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. Yes, while we're getting our bandana ready, I'll go ahead and tell y'all about another person in the story. His name's Ananias, okay? And he is in the city of Damascus, and God calls upon him and says, you get to go face this big bag of bully, okay, named Sal, and you're going to basically spread the word of God to him, and you're going to make him see the love of God. And now... Ananias had heard all of the horrible things that Saul had done. He doesn't want to be thrown in jail because he does believe in Jesus and he's scared of Saul. So what he does, let's walk over here, Lincoln. Can we go on this side? So what he does is he waits patiently for Saul to go to the city of Damascus. Okay, now Lincoln, I want you to just walk forward. I'm right behind you. Is it hard to see? Can you see? Stop, 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 stop. Okay, now go over here. <laughs> Come this way. In case when he gets to you, I want you to say, bam, Jesus. Can you say that? <laughs> Just say Jesus. He said Jesus. Okay, so now what we can do is we can take this bandana off and you can see. So once he got to the city of Damascus, Ananias let it, to, let it be to where Sal can see now. And so basically, let's come back over here, guys. Basically, my story today is to show you guys there are people in this world who are blind to Jesus' love. And it is basically up to us as Jesus' followers to spread that word. Okay? The black one. <laughs> Can we bow our heads in a prayer, please? Okay. Basically, we're going to echo read. And so whatever I say, you're going to say after me. Jesus, I bow my head to thank you, Lord, for all of my blessings. Please help me to remember to always spread your love and kindness as long as I live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. And here I have the famous candy bowl. One piece. As they choose their candy, do you have any celebrations or blessings you want to share this morning? Snack pack this week grew from 105 to 130 names. So as we share our uh, blessings and pass them on to the snack pack kids, keep those coming because they are very needed at this time with the corona and parents laid off and so forth. It's growing. And so um, we do covet your support there. But God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me ring the music of the spheres. This is my father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world, the eternal now that's there. In the rustling grass I hear him pass, he seeks 
to me everywhere. This is my Father's world, a living in the hills. The Lord is from seas, also strong. God is the ruler, yeah. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be this fight, and earth and heaven be one. This is my Father's world. Blessed thy heart please friend The Lord is king and the heavens sing God reigns and the earth be glad You remain standing in Just as I am without one plea, but that the blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. As I am, no toss of hell With many a conflict, many a doubt Fightings and fears within Without the Lamb of God I come I come As I am, my love unknown hath broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yes, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come. If you would, please turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 19 through, 1 through 19, excuse me. Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. Who changed your life when you were a youngin? Now, I want you to think back to your maybe your teens, your 20s, your 30s, maybe even up to your 40s. Who was that instrumental person that helped you, you know, find your purpose, that maybe steered you in a direction and you retired from that job 40 years later? Who was it that maybe you think back now in it seems like God just sent them just for you to change your life. Now, think back. Who is that most important person? You can't say Jesus, right? Everybody knows it's Jesus, right? I'm talking that other person that changed your life. And I want to hear some, okay? Uh, who, who was it? Think back. Who changed your life? And let's try to think outside of like uh, your parents, maybe. Maybe it was an extended family. Who was it that changed your life or was very, very important? Anybody? Can anybody name anybody? Grandma Who? Grandma Trap. Grandma Trap? All right. Uh, what did she do? devotional every morning at the breakfast table. And I guess you saw that when you visited and you spent time with Grandma Trap. All right. Oh, yeah, that's great. Anybody else? 
Barbara Winship. What? What was Bar? Who was Barbara Winship? Barbara Winship invited you to Bible study, and it, the rest is history, right? Who else? David Corman. Who's David Corman? A man named Corman, he was a choir director in college, and he helped you think about your calling. Think about choir as ministry. And now you're about to graduate with a, with a master's, and you're, almost, you're off into the real world. <laughs> about to get married, too, coming up. Isn't that great? You know, I was thinking I would hear some teachers and coaches. How many have a teacher They look back and... He or she was very instrumental. Uh, yes, who was it? He's like, I just got to raise my hand so Brooks doesn't look stupid. <laughs> this doesn't fail. Her name was Shannon Who's Shannon Lindsay? She was my cheer coach in high school. Your cheer coach. Well, what did she do? Oh, that's awesome. She just was a brilliant example in, in your teen years. Anybody have a coach? Oh, we love our coach, our high school AD. Uh, we talk about him, and he's still alive, uh, Coach Rothwell. And, uh, I mean, we'll tear up. Who, who was your coach? Coach Joe Patey. Where was that? Was that here in Muleshoe? Floyd Data? My mother-in-law's from uh, Darby. Huh? Honest, truthful, brilliant example. And how many people do you think he touched in his life? Can we count them? You see, I was expecting to hear a lot of coaches. If we go back, you can probably think back. Uh, you may be 90, and you probably think back to those teachers and coaches. You see, it's those people we remember. How many people would say Billy Graham? Like he was instrumental, he changed your life. Anybody say Billy Graham? No. How many may have went to a crusade? Anybody went to a crusade? It came to Lubbock uh, 20 years ago or so. Yeah, see, Billy Graham's a superstar, is he not? Greatest evangelist probably in the uh, history of the church. We, we, you are thinking people in your life. But often people think of these rock stars. And notice, uh, uh, nobody said that outspoken uh, superstar athlete. Can you even name one? No, no, no. So as we think back, we often think of these, I don't want to say common, but these people, they're just in our community, right? These are the people in your neighborhood. In your neighborhood, right? But they make this profound difference for people over and over and over and over. We all know Billy Graham, right? But who was it that went and traveled with Billy Graham every place, every place on the road, stayed in the same hotel room, was around him like constantly, never left him to protect him and be accountable. Do you remember him? Can you name his name? I can't. I meant to Google it. I didn't even remember, right? Nobody can remember him. Nobody. There was a show, uh, uh, let me see, it was about 10 years ago when uh, my 16-year-old, soon to be 17, uh, was, you know, about 6, 7. And if you have kids in that age, you may have watched it. It was called Higley Town Heroes. Uh, did you ever see Higley Town Heroes? And you think, I was like, oh my goodness, could there be a, a sillier sounding cartoon? But get this, that cartoon on Saturday morning was dedicated to lifting up those people like you have just named as the heroes of our community. There's the Higley Town Hero Fireman. There's the Higley Town Hero Mayor. There's the Higley Town Hero uh, Plumber. And there's the Higley Town Hero Local 
policemen. Can you imagine how controversial a show would have been now about making a police officer the hero of your community? Can you imagine that, church? Oh my gosh, the world's going to end, right? Oh, that's, that's so, that's so, can you imagine that? How countercultural that would be today? You see, we often know the superstars, but we rarely remember the people behind the superstars. And as you read today in chapter 9, I want you to think about who is the superstar? Who is the MVP of this passage? Let's read. Acts chapter 9, verses 1. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, the first way to describe the Christian movement, the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he had neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus. Whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias, Lord, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. You sure about that? What you talking about, Lord? And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. Hello. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their, key, and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fr fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus, and once he began, and once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I noticed none of you mentioned uh, your local Methodist pastor in your top three. <laughs> I noticed you never said the dentist, okay? The dentist is a Higley Town hero. In fact, the Methodist pastor might have just edged your local dentist into the top 10, okay? Who is the MVP of this passage? Who's the superstar? Who would you say is the superstar? 
Sure? It's like, you're going to get used to this. I ask you trick questions over and over and over. The last church would like fall for it like eight times in a row. I would say the superstar is Paul. Look what Paul did. Paul got saved. Paul went to the synagogues immediately. Paul wrote uh, two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul was the leader of the church to the Gentiles. Paul, at the end of his ministry, most likely preached the gospel to the emperor, and most people thought he went splat, got his head cut off, because that's what, that was the option for a, uh, a Roman citizen, even though he was a Jew. Some people think he survived and went on to Spain. I'm an optimist, so I kind of think, yeah, maybe he got to you know, save his head and go to Spain and preach the gospel. Look at all the things that Saul did. We often say Saul, and probably if I had pr not primed you in the uh, excellent, most excellent children's sermon that I had not primed you, if I said who's the MVP or who's the superstar, uh, usually the people, if I preach this other places, will say Saul. But who's the MVP really? It's Ananias. Paul is a persecutor. Everybody knows Paul. The local Christians in Damascus know Paul. His reputation has got around. And he's headed to persecute people. And on his way, Jesus shines a light. He shines the light of the truth. He appears, but all they really do is hear his voice. And the people who were with Saul were like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And Paul, imagine him, you know, I've always imagined him getting knocked off his horse. But really, it's this, this bright light. He heard Jesus' voice. Boom, he's blind. What's going on? He says, go to town. Wait for this guy named Ananias. And you'll get directions from there. He's waiting for three days. What's happening? He's asking questions. Can you imagine? Like, okay, so this guy says, uh, in regards to the law, I was blameless. <laughs> I, he's like the super Jew, the super a a Israelite. In regard to the law, I was knocking that out of the park. Now, the true and living God has knocked him down to the ground, has knocked him to his senses. And didn't you think he might have been wondering, what's going on? Why am I here? Why is this happening to me? I was serving you, God. I was doing your will. I was persecuting these little plain people who were, you know, such a, such a presence. They were, ah, it's just go away blasphemers and now I'm here sitting in this like stranger's living room and they're having to like feed me because I can't even see the food they're having to lead me around because I can't find the bathroom by myself I haven't been blind for very long guys right and so now they're telling me to wait on this stranger some guy named Ananias what's up with that I want to ask you today, what would happen if there was no Ananias? You see, we all know Paul. We all remember Paul, but few of us remember Ananias. I want to, I want to share three things about Ananias. And I think these three things will relate to our life. Because when we think back, we, we may remember that person, that Ananias in our life. Now that we're seeing, you know, hindsight discernments 2020. So let's look at three things from the text. Ananias said yes. Ananias questioned. But then Ananias went. He said yes. He obeyed. And he went. Ananias said yes to a vision. He's just a dude. He's just this guy. He's just this disciple in Damascus in the church, probably hiding in a little room. He's just this guy from Damascus who got a vision and said yes to somebody else. 
he had never met. You see, Ananias' vision wasn't about Ananias. It was about this other guy. Ananias said yes to a vision about a guy named Paul. And he said, no. What happens if Ananias doesn't say yes? Well, we really don't know. Would the Lord had sent someone else if Ananias said no? I think free will. I think it's possible. But Ananias said yes to a vision to help somebody else. We all remember the superstars, but it is the Higley Town hero that makes a difference. The nation, the community that does not focus on making the Ananias the MVP falls and crumbles. Do you see that happening right now? Do you see that these local policemen are demonized? Like they're the enemy, right? The nation who demonizes Ananias is justly damned. The nation who demonizes Ananias is justly damned. They deserve what they get because it's the Ananias who's the person behind the scene making the plumbing work, making the water work, getting you electricity. Somehow they're saying yes and they're serving other people. Yeah, they want a job, but their job is about other people. Ananias said yes. Ananias came to that path where it split. He chose the path less traveled by, and it has made all the difference for us. He came to a place and he questioned God. He questioned, Lord, is that the person? You sure you want to send me to him? He came to that part of his life, of his calling. He could have gone this way long. I, long, I wanted to travel them both, right? But I chose the one less traveled by, and it made, in the end, all the difference for Paul. There's a difference in hearing God's voice saying yes and then questioning, as opposed to rightly hearing God's voice questioning and then trying to say yes. You see, Paul and Ananias said, yes, they heard God's call. But there is a difference in questioning what you hear and then trying to say yes, as opposed to hearing yes and then questioning how is this going to turn out. You see, the one who hears clearly, says yes, but then questions the details. How is this going to work? I don't know. You show me, God. You see, those kind of questions lead to clarity. Those kind of questions lead to calling. Those kind of questions lead to your fulfillment in life. But the people who hear, and hey, look, I've been this way. You might have been this way. This isn't a guilt trip. You may, have, though, you may know people who are doing this right now. The people who hear God's call, but then question whether it is God's call. I'm not talking, I'm talking about beyond discernment. Who question God's call and then try to say yes after that. It leads to the paralysis of analysis. Have you ever heard that? I've seen people in this perpetual cycle. Did I hear God's call? I don't know. Did I? Did you think I hear God's call? Just say yes to the next step. And then ask questions as you're headed that way. And Ananias said yes to a vision that was all about some other guy in town. Then Ananias, and then Ananias questioned along the way. But Ananias went anyway. That continues and completes the loop. Ananias went and he fulfilled God's plan for the beginning of Paul's life. You must eventually go. And Ananias must go. And Ananias 
has gone, and Ananias will go. And yeah, they questioned the details, but they said yes, because they rightly heard. You see, God's instrument, Paul, God's purpose was to make Paul God, his instrument to the Gentiles to take the gospel and let a, 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 and ignite a fire that went anywhere. And as you track the history of the church, you know, about a hundred or so, hundred plus years later, uh, the gospel's in Britain. And the, in a couple hundred years later, it's, it's all the way into the top of Europe. And a couple hundred years later, it's in what we would call Moscow now. See, it was Paul who was chosen to be the superstar. And Ananias was the instrument that led to that instrument. And we won't beat around the bush. We won't beat a dead horse. I'm, learn I'm teaching metaphors in sixth grade English, right? <laughs> we won't lose our mind when we question it, you know, when we question God. We're just going to do it. Just do it. Oh, gosh, that's enough, right? I want to ask you today, and if you would be ready to, to lead us in our closing song, I want to ask you, will you be an Ananias in this church? And Angela and I can look around, and we've been blown away. And this isn't just pastor talk. I know she's he shared it with you. We look around, and we say Ananias everywhere. We see it. I've never been in a place that had, uh, you know, people routinely do, or they've already organized their children's time, and I'm not begging them. This is amazing, man. I've, you know, it took a long time to have people up there where it just came, and it just worked, and we never, I never, you know, you just show up, and it's there. You see, I already see Ananias everywhere, everywhere in this church, but here's the deal about a healthy, growing church. A healthy, growing church that focuses on Paul will see a decline in Ananias. But a church who focuses on making Ananiases see more and more Pauls sent out into the world. Did you get that? Stand up, church. It's like the stand up time, and it's like the, the soft music time to cue you, right? Now, listen, guys, if I say one thing and you remember it, right? Think about this. Long after I'm gone, long after Angela is gone, when your children who are five, ten, and they're leading, and they're maybe singing, or they're doing uh, the stuff up there. A church that focuses on Paul will always beg for another Ananias. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do for VBS? We don't have anyone, do we? supposed to have it? And then they make something that's, well, you can imagine not worth going to, right? Well, I don't know. We got to find someone to do this. You see, a church that focuses on superstars will always beg for an Ananias. But a church that makes an Ananias sees Paul and Paul and Paul 10 times over. Y'all know who Jimmy Nunn is? Yeah. What, what's Jimmy Nunn doing right now? Y'all here? Y'all know, right? Say it out loud. You remember? Jimmy Nunn is bishing. He's bishoping. He's just this guy from West Texas, a small, you know, some small podunk town. This is the most podunk Methodist conference in the United States. We're like the lowest paying conference in the United, in the United Methodist Church. It's okay. There have been an extraordinary number of Methodist pastors come out of this place. In the 80s at McMurray, there was a revival. Who's that guy? He's our DS. What's his name? Yeah, Don Bourne. Don Bourne's sister. He's DSing. He's just this guy from this little town. Jimmy Nunn. Over and over and over. Because little churches like this, somewhere had an Ananias who made a difference. 
Who wants to be an Ananias? Raise your hand. Who wants to make an Ananias? Raise your hand. Come on, church. Choose me, say yes. Choose me, say yes. We better. Let's sing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. My will is not in what I own, not in the strength of flesh and bone, but in the costly words of love. At the cross, my worth is not in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame, but in the blood of Christ that flowed at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer. Trust in Him no other, my soul is satisfied in Him alone. As summer's flowers we fade and die, beneath and beauty hurry by, but life eternal calls to all. The cross. I will not boast in wealth or might, or human wisdom's leading light, but I will boast in knowing Christ at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer. of the trustees of Asbury Theological Seminary for like decades or longer. Steve Moore, another guy from West Texas, high up, served high up uh, at Asbury Theological Seminary. People say he saved the Wesley Foundation at Tech. He manages a trust called the John Wesley Fellows that pays for Methodists to get their PhD. Steve Harper, Another local guy, president of Asbury Theological Seminary in Orlando. Don and his sister Catherine are DSs, who as Jimmy Nunn is a bishop. Steve Martin, who's like a dad to me, teaches uh, leadership, spiritual formation at Asbury. On and on and on I could go. Be the other guy. 
Be the other girl. Amen? Go in peace and fulfill God's calling in your life. Amen. Let's go.